Hello there, Mad Mike here, and welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm aware this is my second upload today, but uh, there was something else that kind of caught my eye uh, while I was looking at some of the news for today, and there's been a very strong media push uh, for what appears to be Brie Larson's involvement in Star Wars. Um, now, this is something that's been rumored for a bit ever since her involvement with as Captain Marvel in the MCU. There's been people questioning whether or not uh, they could use her in the Star Wars films as well, or any of the other MCU actors for that matter. But here's, uh, here's the thing, is that right now uh, there's a push for her to be involved in that. I think that she's kind of become a bit of a poster child for uh, the kind of the, the feminist movement uh, and they're trying to push her into bigger and bigger roles. Uh, even though Captain Marvel has basically been a role that's been now been blown up because of the media sensationalism. Uh, but here's, uh, here, here's the thing. A lot of people are reacting very badly to this, um, or very negatively, I should say, uh, you know, about this would this is a terrible idea you're going to just drag more shit into star wars which has already you know taken more than a few hits over the last year or two uh and essentially is almost a, a dead franchise at this point it's just floating um but here's here's my take on it and i think it's a i i'd like to think it's a bit more grounded than some of the stuff that i've seen um and the thing is there are are really there's there's two major problems uh, with bringing her over into Star Wars. Now, one problem, which is more of the financial logical problem, is she's been signed on to five films uh, with Disney that we're aware of at the moment. Uh, and again, some of this is rumor, um, and some of this is stuff that we've confirmed. But basically, I think uh, Captain Marvel and Endgame were her first two films, and she signed on for three more. Obviously, at least one or two of those are probably going to be Captain Marvel sequels and maybe another Avengers outing. Uh, but the thing is, is depending on the production schedules for those, uh, they would have to work around her doing those films if they were to integrate her into a Star Wars film. So that might mess with that those mechanics a bit if they decided to do it. Uh, the other thing is is that you're going to be giving a lot, and I mean a lot of exposure to Brie Larson, and she is an extremely polarizing person because of her uh, social justice-y uh, tendencies. Uh, let's, let's just call them that. Um, but and I think it's more of a negative than a positive uh, in terms of drawing people into your films, uh, since the majority of the target demographic of Star Wars and uh, Marvel films are guys. So it would be kind of weird to have somebody that's basically saying that uh, men are evil uh, in, you know, I'm paraphrasing here, obviously. I don't know if that's an actual quote from her. The only one that I really know is an actual quote from her is, this movie was not made for you. I don't care what some... Uh, no, sorry. I don't care what some middle-aged white guy has to say about A Wrinkle in Time. Uh, that quote will never die. But... And in a bad way. Uh, but the, the thing is, is with doing this, you run into the, the weird financials and the planning issues and the dating issues, because I'm sure that their their production slate is already pretty well set at this point, uh, at least for Marvel. I don't know about Star Wars, because it's a complete and utter train wreck, but uh, I know for Marvel it's a hard set, so they'd have to work around those. Uh, the And that also goes to show anything else that she's involved in right now that we either aren't privy to or uh, is going to be coming out in the near future. So, you run into that problem, then you run into the payment problem that you're going to be dumping a lot of money into an actress that a lot of people do not like, um, and then you're going to run in, and that kind of encompasses the financial side of things, which is one major problem, and you, you can probably get past that problem. That probably wouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, the second problem, however, is something that you are going to have to work very hard to get past if you want to do certain things, and that is this. Captain Marvel financially made over a billion dollars. Now that is a rousing success and it was a success because of where they put that movie in terms of its dating and its filmography in relation to the MCU. Because that movie came out right before 
Avengers Endgame. And everybody thought, oh, Captain Marvel's... They, all the rumors were going around. Captain Marvel was going to have a big role in Endgame. That's why they put her in this movie. That's why they're having her right before Endgame comes up. That's why she was in the end credits. Or her, She was teased in the end credit scene for Avengers Infinity War. And everybody, uh, you know... Everybody thought that she was going to have this huge role in Endgame. Obviously, her role was minuscule at best. I think she maybe has five to seven minutes of screen time in the film, and that's a three-hour movie. Um, but the, that those were the reasons why that movie made a shit ton of money, because everybody thought they were going to get a glimpse at the end credit scene that was going to have something to do with Endgame, and because they thought that Brie Larson was going to factor into Avengers Endgame a lot more prevalently than she did. I think that that is a majority of the money, probably, that that movie made. So over $500 billion was just because of Endgame. And again, we can see the massive tank that Endgame was uh, that went that just destroyed theaters for weeks and weeks and weeks. But that is the reason why that movie made a billion dollars. I think the Captain Marvel sequel that you're going to see come out, which they're obviously doing, and they still have the directors attached to it, is probably going to do... I'd say probably around five to six hundred million. Again, with the Marvel bump, assuming that their goodwill hasn't been entirely worn out at that point. But Captain Marvel as a film is not good. It is not good material. I equate it to the quality of the later Transformers films. Uh, you know, it, it's not great. And now you are thinking about taking that actress who is really untested at a at a high level. Just because you made one blockbuster film does not mean you're a sure thing. You're going to take her and you're going to bring her into a franchise that is already essentially just a mass of twisted metal at this point. You know, like a, a you know, it's more destroyed than the frickin' Death Star, either of them, or all, any of the three that exist. Um, even though Starkiller Base was something else, quote-unquote, it was just a Death Star. But the, the thing is, is that that whole franchise needs to get itself worked out. And it, your, bringing in Brie Larson is not going to work anything out for Star Wars. It is going to make a lot of things worse. Because a lot of the people that really like Star Wars like the MCU, and a lot of those people do not like Brie Larson. And you're going to see even more backlash if you bring her over, because then it's just gonna it's just gonna exasperate so many things. Unless Disney puts a gag order on her and says, "No, you can't say X, Y, and Z during any of the press junkets," because the press junket that they had for Captain Marvel and her anything that she was doing uh, in an interview that was related to Avengers Endgame felt like a total train wreck. Uh, it, it felt bad. It felt really bad, especially the Captain Marvel stuff where she was the the center of everything. And, you know, everything that she said in private, she's going to, and everything that she said uh, about using uh, her fame and fortune, uh, or her fame and, and status as a, as a platform for X, Y, and Z. Um, you, you need to make sure that if you're doing this, this, she needs to have a gag order. She can't be spouting any of these things in official interviews, whatever. If she wants to go insane on her Twitter account, let her go insane on her Twitter account. Let her go to whatever functions she wants to go to, any protests, whatever. Who cares? But if, if she's doing an interview for your company and she is in your movie, then that means you need to say, look, if you are in an interview we are paying you to be in, then that means you need to abide by our rules. And if you don't, we will void your contract and we will not pay you. Um... And that's the only way that you're going to get any goodwill in this scenario is if you somehow get her to shut up. Um, and you, if you don't do that, if Disney chooses not to do that and they do bring her over into Star Wars, it is going to make things terribly, terribly, terribly worse. Because Star Wars as itself is a dying franchise at this point. It is damn near dead. The only thing that is even marginally keeping it afloat is the announcement of that uh, Old Republic film that's going to be coming out, uh, that's being done by Benioff and Weiss, which, by the way, after Game of Thrones Season 8, they don't have much goodwill left either. So there is a lot of question marks for the future of Star Wars. Maybe I'll do a video on that at some point if I get some more information about it. But this could be really, really bad if they if they do this, and if they don't do it carefully, it could be even worse. Um, so you know, that's just my opinion on on what she's doing, on what's being kind of 
pushed right now uh, by the media for the most part. Uh, and again, I, th- I think this is a bad idea. I think, honestly, I think Brie Larson should go back to doing dramas uh, and independent film. Well, maybe not independent films, but go dive back into dramas or something like that because that seems really what more what her wheelhouse is in terms of her acting i mean the the movie that she won an oscar for uh, i believe was an independent film but it was it was a, it was an indie film but it was a um not a thriller but it was a drama and i think that she should probably go back to that but the only problem is is that now again because she stated that she's using uh her status as a platform that you know, she's never going to want to go back to that because it's a smaller platform than what she's on. And she's probably also not going to get paid as much, to be fair. But in terms of what her talent set is, I don't think she necessarily has the talent for action and adventure and stuff like that. Seems like she's more suited to other stuff, uh, just from her acting range. But, you know, that's my take on it. What do you think about having Brie Larson in Star Wars? Do you think it's a terrible idea? Do you think it's a good idea? Um, you know, do, do you even like her as an actress, period? Uh, you know, put your thoughts in the comments. Again, I like to read them. I like to know what you're thinking. Uh, remember to uh, hit the bell for notifications, hit the like button, subscribe, and remember, I live my life free of compromise. Do you?